Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can contact us on our website at www.lanessafarms.com. Send us an email at customerservice at lanessafarms.com or give us a call or send us a text at the number listed below. Today we're continuing our Livestock Health series talking about CD&T vaccinations. All of our videos are made specifically for viewers like you based off of your questions and the feedback we receive. If there's a video that you would like to see, feel free to reach out to us and ask your questions. Don't forget to subscribe and we really appreciate those thumbs up. Without further delay, let's get started talking about CD&T vaccinations. So today we're going to talk about CDT vaccination. Now there's lots of other vaccinations out there. We're not going to get into them, um, but the most common one that you're going to hear about and that you're going to be giving your sheep and goats is going to be CDT. Um, so what is CDT? Well, it's three separate uh, things actually. It's a three-way vaccination. The first one that we're going to talk about is the C and D. Now enterotoxemia is a frequently severe disease in sheep and goats of all ages. Now it's caused by two strains of bacteria called Clostridium perfringens and this strain is termed um, by types C and D. Now these bacteria are normally found in low numbers in the gastrointestinal tract of all sheep and goats. Now these organisms are normally laying low in the small and large intestines and that is to say that they're present in relatively low numbers and, to, and appear to be in a relatively um, kind of dormant state in the normal healthy animal. Now what happens to trigger them uh, to cause disease is a change in the diet of the animal. Most commonly the change that triggers disease is an increase in the amount of grain, protein supplement, milk or milk replacer in the case of lambs or kids, and or the grass that the sheep or goat is ingesting. Collectively, these feeds tend to be rich in starch, sugar, and protein. Now, when unusually high levels of these nutrients reach the intestine, the Clostridium perfringens goes under explosive growth, increases its numbers rapidly, and grows out of control in the intestine. As the organism grows in number, it releases very potent toxins that harm the animal. These toxins can cause damage to the intestine as well as numerous other organs in the body. Now this results generally in fatalities, particularly in non-vaccinated animals or in newborn lambs or kids whose dam has not been vaccinated. Now, the treatment for enterotoxemia is generally not successful, and that's why we want to talk about the prevention. Now, the vaccination is a cornerstone of prevention for this disease. For sheep and goats, there's multiple vaccines available that induce immunity to the toxins generated by Clostridium perfringens type C and D. And because tetanus is also an important disease to help prevent in sheep and goats, many veterinarians recommend that sheep and goats be vaccinated vaccinated with a vaccine that induces protection against tetanus as well. Now these vaccines are often termed three-way vaccines because they induce protection against the three bacteria involved, the Clostridium perfringens type C, type D, and Clostridium tetany, which is the bacterium that causes tetanus. So the CDT vaccination is done uh, relatively simply. You're gonna give two vaccinations. The first vaccination is gonna be accomplished between the fourth and sixth week of life. The second vaccination is gonna be accomplished between the eighth and 10th week of life. Both of these shots are going to be two milliliters. Um, now you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out your bottle to make sure that what I'm telling you corresponds with the directions that's given on the bottle. But generally speaking, it's two milliliters and it, they're both going to be given what's called subcutaneous and subcutaneous means under the skin. All right, so I generally tend to use a three milliliter syringe. I feel that that's best. And if you notice the end here, uh, it's the screw on type. It's not the uh, push on type. I find that that works a lot better because when I'm injecting an animal, if I um, go to pull it out, I don't have to worry about it disconnecting. So you can buy all this at any of your local tractor supply stores or online. Um, we, uh, the producers pride, this is what we get at uh, tractor supply. So 
For my subcutaneous shots that I'm gonna be giving today, I'm gonna to be giving my CD and T vaccination. Um, it's gonna be a two milliliter subcutaneous shot. So for my subcutaneous means uh, under the skin, I'm gonna be using a 20 gauge, uh, one inch needle. So these are sterile, I'll just open it up and what will happen is, is this will just screw right onto that needle there and when I pull this will pull right off so as I stated I'm gonna be given a 2 uh, ml injection so what I'm gonna do first off is I am going to um, clean off the top of my bottle here uh, so that's nice and clean and then I'll draw up however much air uh, for however much fluid I'm gonna be drawing up. So in this case, I'm gonna be drawing up two milliliters. So I wanna fill my syringe up with two milliliters of air. The reason is, is these are, are airtight. And so in, it, so I avoid creating a vacuum inside. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna inject as much air into the bottle as I'm gonna pull out. So I'm gonna stick my needle in through the top, inject my two milliliters of air, and then turn my bottle upside down and withdraw as much fluid as I need uh, in order to give my injection. So as you can see, I'm gonna have to overdraw in order to get it and it's slowly filling up. I'm gonna push it up and get that air out. Okay, I don't quite have two mLs yet. Continue to pull back, overdraw, and then push the excess amount in until I'm right at two milliliters. Once I'm at two milliliters, I can withdraw my syringe and get ready to get my shot. In this case, I'm gonna leave it just like that until I get my lamb in here. That way it stays uh, nice and sanitary. And I don't have to worry about sticking. Okay, so I'm gonna give a subcutaneous shot to this animal. And the best place to give this is right over the rib cage here. You can see where the fleshy part is. And I can actually pull some of that skin out and get just underneath the skin to get it. So just like when I give uh, people a shot, I want to clean this area off with alcohol. Some people will tell you that you, know, you don't have to do this, but as much as it costs for an alcohol swab, it's a silly waste of money for you not to do it. So I'm just going to give that a good clean. You can see all that garbage there. And this is going to help to prevent this animal from getting an infection. So I'm going to clean that area off right there. And then I'm just going to take my needle and I'm going to go underneath the skin. I'm gonna lift up. I'm just gonna go underneath the skin and you'll feel it poke. The animal's not gonna like it. Just try to keep a steady hand. Give it and then you're done. So I gave my two mLs and I'm done. Don't rub it, don't mess with it, just leave it alone. And that's it, it's just that easy. Well, we certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We are out there on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and don't forget to check us out at www.lanessafarms.com.